Hi everybody, welcome to VLSI Point. So this is the third video of FPGA based system design playlist. And in today's video, we are going to cover the types of FPGA. So before we are starting today's topic, let me tell you one thing. If you find my videos useful, then do subscribe it guys. Here you can see only around 20% of you have subscribed my channel and others are not subscribing. It's free of cost. So if my content is useful, it is helping to you, do subscribe it. So guys, let's get started. First, we will see how many types are there of FPGA. So mainly we have three types. First one is SVM based FPGA. The second one is anti-fuse programmable based FPGA. And the third one is flash based FPGA. So starting from the SRAM based FPGA. So in this SRAM, the configuration memory is volatile and reprogrammable. That means the SRAM based FPGA has the volatile memory and it is reprogrammable. Volatile means what? So volatile means it requires the power to maintain the stored information. Whenever the power is interrupted, the stored data is quickly lost. So this is the meaning of volatile nature. Also, it requires a non-volatile memory to store the bit stream due to the volatile nature of the internal configuration memory. Obviously, you will need an external memory which is of non-volatile nature so that you can store all the data, all the required bit stream. Also here, we implement the lookup table in logic blocks to implement the combinational functionality along with the flip-flops. Xilinx, Atmel, Lattice, these all are the major vendors of SRAM based FPGA. Now the second one we have anti-fuse programmable based FPGA. So these anti-fuse programmable based FPGAs are one time programmable. Also it is non-volatile in nature. So whatever you have programmed it will permanently stored in the memory. But you cannot reprogram this. Switches are normally open and are generally anti-fuse type. Actually, that's why the name anti-fuse has given here. Whenever it is in unprogrammed state, that anti-fuse switches as of high resistance. Or you can also call it as an open circuit. And whenever the programming happened, then it operates as a closed circuit. So as I told, whenever a programming current has passed, it acts as a switches and close the connection. Actel, Microsemi, these are the major vendors of anti-fuse programmable based FPGA. The third type is flash based FPGA. It combines the property of both SRAM based and the anti-fuse based. So flash based FPGAs are non-volatile like anti-fuse FPGA but also it has reprogrammable nature like the SRAM FPGAs. Xilinx, Lattice, these all are the major vendors of flash based FPGA. So guys here we have covered the types of FPGA and now we are moving towards the FPGA design flow. So FPGA is divided into two parts front end and back end. So first we will see the front end part and then we will move towards the back end part. So in front end we have the design specification, the architecture design, RTL modeling, verification and then the synthesis. After it move towards the back end where we have the floor planning, placement, routing, static timing analysis and finally the implementation. So suppose you have an idea and you have to design a circuit for that. So what you have to do first you need to specify the design. So you have to explain the protocols, the clock frequency information, the input output ports available and how exact the design will work. Everything you have to specify before proceeding. So this is how that design specification step works. The second thing is the architecture design. So in this phase block level architecture is generated and we'll come to know how many sub blocks are required to design the circuit and how sub blocks are connected through the internal wires. So all these things will be cleared in this architecture design phase then we will move towards the RTL modeling. So once the architecture is ready each block will be coded through the hardware description language. You can either use the Verilog or the VHDL followed by the test bench. So after writing the code and the test bench part this RTL modeling phase is ready then we will move towards the verification part. So this verification can be performed by using the simulation. As we all know, we can verify the design either by using system Verilog test bench or the UVM test bench. 
So once the simulation is done successfully, then we perform the synthesis operation. So in this phase, we generate the netlist for the RTL code. So this is how we have completed the front end part. After netlist generation, we will move towards the floor planning, placement, routing, static timing analysis, and finally the implementation. So guys, if you are interested to know the backend part also, then let me know in the comment box. I will make a separate video on backend and explain each phase in detail. So I hope today's video is clear to you. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment box and join our community on Telegram. There you can ask your doubts and discuss with your peers. It's time to sign off guys. We will meet in the next video. See you soon.